My name is Malaika Vaz and I'm a wildlife filmmaker and a television presenter. I live between India and New York City and I'm constantly living out of a suitcase and traveling across the world for different film projects. So I definitely think about balance quite a lot on a personal and professional basis. And right now I am so excited to be in Nepal to learn from some of the most wise experts in the world of wellness. I'm about to meet someone really special who can teach me so much about meditation, wellness, and well-being. So this is Mingyu Rinpoche's house. He is a Buddhist scholar, teacher, and someone who's really a human repository of wisdom. And I'm really excited to hear from him today and understand some of his perspectives on the world around us. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Very happy to see you here. Yeah. I have so many questions for you. Yes. Whatever you ask question, I will try my best to answer. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be difficult questions, don't worry. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> my, my, my heart is a beating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here to learn about meditation and not being stressed on you. You can't be stressed. That's not how it's supposed to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, I know. I'd love to know your thoughts on how you personally approach well-being. So for me, the real meaning of well-being, there are three aspects. Awareness, love and compassion, and the wisdom. These three qualities are with us all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody has it. The problem is we are not recognized in our meditation tradition, what we call, if we have ten qualities, nine is positive, one negative. Normally what we see, only one negative and we exaggerate that one. And we deny the nine positive things within us. So now we need to recognize more positive. And how to do that? It's just appreciation at the beginning. Appreciate about self. And community. And people around you, mm -hmm. and about the world. So you can appreciate that, oh, I'm alive. How wonderful. I'm breathing. How wonderful. Today I clean my house. How wonderful. I have friends. How wonderful. So that really provoked the, the, how to say, the recognition of the inner well-being. So not everyone can be a Buddhist monk, but I feel like there's so much to learn from this practice. What advice do you have for people in cities who are seeking out peace and happiness? In our tradition, what we call the real safe place is your true nature, the awareness, like sky. And that is with us all the time. The problem is we are not recognized and we don't know how to be with that. So in a way, the sky is, uh, the problem is sky is a little bit you cannot really see. It is like beyond concept. But the good news is you can experience. When you just be, you don't have to do much. You just let your mind be as it is. It's just there. So then it doesn't matter. When we try to be with that in the temple or in the crowd, crowd city. But in, for the practical level, how you can connect with that, I think first we need to choose one object. Maybe breath. You have breath, right? Are you breathing now? I am, yes, thankfully. That's all. <laughs> so when I ask you, are you breathing now, that moment, your awareness with the breath. That's true. That has become meditation now. So we don't need to have very strong focus. You just know that you're breathing, or you feel your breath. Mm -hmm. And just glimpse again, again. So the, the awareness, the luminosity, or the clarity of mind, recognized through the breath. And it's just short time. Mm -hmm. But you have to repeat again, again. So that's the how we start at the beginning. There are many jobs that people have across the world, whether that is filmmaking, like my team and I do, or whether that is the healthcare industry, which is just incredibly long hours, stressful conditions, and very high stakes on a daily basis. For people working in these kinds of jobs, how do you recommend that they find ways to achieve well-being and make time for themselves? So I think that's really important that we need to sometimes prioritize things because you cannot accomplish everything. And we need to learn how to say no also sometime. And, and taking care of yourself is for long run, you are taking care of others also. You are taking care of your project or whatever also. 
So to find that balance, I think really important. But sometimes we really want to do, we, we don't want to say no, or we don't want to let go. And then we tire. <laughs> for example, for me, I really love teaching. So sometimes I teach non-stop, no weekend, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> So what I find is after a certain level, its body is really kind of like tired and affect my body. So now what I do is try to sleep early. But sometimes it's quite difficult, right? We really want to look, yeah. at, look at the smartphone. So I think you need to, if the craving comes, I want to grab my smartphone. So for me, be with that craving. Just watching that craving, it helps. No, no craving. I will not look at smartphone. I will not look at smartphone. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. And if you follow with the smartphone, then you cannot sleep. So sleep early, I think it's really important. Then I do physical exercise time to time. Even I need to go to my teaching place, sometimes I walk, go there, or sometimes I choose a different path. And then the most important for me is the meditation. So the meditation really helps. And then diet. So for the physical body, the diet, sleep a little bit early or sleep longer. If you cannot sleep early, maybe late, wake up. <laughs> and then physical exercise. And the most important for the mind, for me, is the, the meditation. And, and for me, the meditation also helps to change my habit because I can have some self-awareness. Oh, now this is too much, too tight. So I need to find a balance. Thank you so much for your insights, Rinpoche Ela. I feel like I've learned so much through this conversation. Thank you. Most welcome. Here with my, my home, I, I create some kind of like natural environment. So behind my house, there's a, a small forest I, I want to show you. I would love to check out the garden. And I have wonderful view here. I can see the mountain, a special sunset. <laughs> so amazing. nature is a part of my, my practice also. Yes, please, you can look. Yes. I honestly think that you can't always be a monk in a monastery, but what you can do is you can take away the spirit of this community, the spirit of care and nurture and intentionality. I'm definitely gonna take away some of this magic.